So today is the big day. We've been preparing for the crane to come to pull the mast off of the boat for a couple days now. We're pretty much all set. The crane's gonna be here in about an hour. I've got a couple of small items I've gotta take care of before we can actually pull it, and then we'll be ready to go. You nervous? Yes. See on the other side. How many people does it take to carry this mast, Steve? Oh, mother. Oh, it's ridiculous, man. Well, damn near destroyed half of the quarter berth here. I'm Desiree, and this is my husband, Jordan. We're sailing around the world, or at least trying to. We made it as far as Panama on our first boat, Atticus 1, which was a really small fixer upper. Now we're on our dream sailboat, Atticus 2 but she needs some work before she's ready to cross oceans. So we're working hard to finish up the last of our boat projects so we can sail south to the Caribbean. All right, so the crane is here. We've got Steve and Travis from Pacific Seacraft who are gonna give us a hand and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's get this thing up. You nervous? Yes. How many people does it take to carry this mast, Steve? Eight comfortably. Six people with no back problems. Yeah, got it. So Atticus one, you only needed two people. So yeah. that's actually a perfect example of why this is nerve wracking for me. The question is, do you trust me? Because today's my first day. <laughs> I'm just glad Steve's here so you can figure this stuff out. I don't know if there's anybody alive that knows more about Pacific Sea Crafts than he does. And these straps are good for like 15,000 pounds. So, so even though it's post Christmas, I should be okay? <laughs> Here we go, buddy. See you on the other side. Love you. Okay, I'm all set. Good job, buddy, you did it. Thank you. It's nice having help. I know, this is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, they're just saying at this point, there's only three wires holding the mast in place. And so we're just doing either side of the uppers and he's saying go nice and slow and go together so that like the forces transition from, you know, the wires to the crane smoothly and evenly. Look at me, man, I work on power boats. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time on sailboat. All right, so that's uh, all the shroud stays, wires disconnected. So I think we're pretty much ready to start pulling the thing. Steve was saying that between the spar tight that is what seals the hole in the deck and then the fact that the mast can corrode a little bit to the mast step, sometimes it'll like kind of pop off. So we'll see how much force it needs. Four guys, one pull. That was clean. Yeah, easy breezy. Got it. Just... Got it. All right. Oh, there she goes.
guys, man. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Thank great you. for a first time. Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> Come on, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. That was great. Yeah. Well, that was nerve-wracking. Built up quite an appetite, so I gotta say, but I'm loving this main salon without that pole there. Without the pole, you mean without everything. the mast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the pole, whatever it is. <laughs> that big thing that pokes up. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest perk of demasting is that I can sit right here like a boss and watch some Netflix. <laughs> so I am just very happy that that step is done and we can start to like really hack away at these projects. We got a hole in the ceiling. Yeah, we do have a hole in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. are, you so, gonna, are you gonna do something about it? I was hoping you could do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next project that I'm gonna get into is replacing the standing rigging. Standing rigging is the wires that hold the mast up. So my first step is gonna be removing the existing standing rigging. But before I wanna do that, I wanna make sure I label everything really well because I'm gonna be using the lengths of these existing wires to cut my new standing rigging. And then next I basically just have to disconnect the wires from the mast and a couple things are gonna be a little bit tricky about that, particularly the fact that the wires are seized really, really intensely to the ends of the spreaders. And so it would take me forever to actually unwind this seizing. And so I'm probably just gonna take a Dremel tool and just cut that crap out. Now typically you replace standing rigging somewhere between every 10 to 17 years. The time is different for everybody. Our standing rigging is original. So it was installed when the boat was built about 24 years ago. Now, it would be pretty easy to argue that this boat hasn't been sailed all that much. The previous owner just didn't get out sailing all that often. And so because the boat was taken care of so meticulously, you know, we probably could get away without replacing the standing rigging. But the fact is that our insurance company requires that we do it. So that's done, we've got to replace the standing rigging. Now, something that we don't necessarily have to do is replace the chain plates, which are the metal metal pieces that connect the rigging to the hull of the boat. But there's an old saying with sailing, which is all you really need to do is keep the keel down, the mast up, and the water out. And so at the end of the day, if those are the only things we actually have to accomplish, then making sure that the mast stays up is probably the number one priority for any projects that we could do on the boat. And so replacing the chain plates, since they're a bit old and they could have crevice corrosion, will help us feel a lot better when we're out in the middle of the ocean so we don't have to worry about whether or not the mass is gonna come down. Now, in order to access the bolts to remove the chain plates, I'm gonna have to remove a little bit of wood behind me. Does that sound dirty? Yeah, like I'm gonna have to put my hands on this wood back here. <laughs> The job is I just need to loosen a handful of nuts, pull the carriage bolts out, and then pull the chain plate off and they'll be removed. Here I am trying to figure out how to remove this fluorescent light fixture. It's like every little step ends up taking so much longer than I think. Hey little buddy, you gonna be my helper? So now the issue is this speaker was installed like after the fact. I don't know if I'm gonna have to remove that speaker just to get the headliner down. Oh, oh yeah, bingo. All right, so now I've got to remove these wood battens or like slats. They're just superficial. They're just there to make it look nice. The bummer is that these battens are screwed in place and then those screws are covered with a teak plug. To remove those plugs nicely without doing much damage, I'm basically gonna drill a hole through the center of each plug and then this drill bit will kind of bottom out against the head of each screw. And then I'm gonna use the thread from a screw here where I cut the head off of the screw. I'm gonna use this in the drill as a drill bit and I'm gonna basically drill this into the pilot hole that I drill. And then as long as I can get a screwdriver onto the head of the screw, then I'll be able to pull the rest of the wood and the plug out with the screw. There you go, one down and a lot to go. In order to get to some of these screws, I'm gonna have to remove this old speaker. Hey. Oh, 
Well, that's not the greatest news. I'm looking in there and it looks like they glassed over the nuts. So I've got a couple more of these battens that I got to remove and then I'll probably have to get a Dremel tool and cut the glass out around the nuts. Fiberglass dust itches a lot. It's never fun to have to grind or cut fiberglass in the boat. Again, one more thing to make such a simple project really complicated. Hey, there's a nut in there. All right, took me a while, but uh, I think now that I've kind of got the handle on it, I'll get the other ones a lot quicker. All right, so I'm just about done with this chain plate, but there's one more nut and it's too high up inside of the hull to deck joint cavity. And so I'm not gonna be able to get a whole saw up in there. So I'm going to have to go at that one with a Dremel, and this one could get a little bit messy. Okay, wow, well this is like really messy. I'm getting dust all over me. It's very loud, but it's working. Oh, come on, it's coming. Slowly but surely. Huh. All you gotta do is remove the chain plate. Shouldn't be bad, just a couple bolts, couple nuts. No big deal. All right, so now we've got a couple bolts that are in the hull and the chain plate really, really solid. And so this is one of those situations where there's just no other solution than to grab the biggest hammer that I can and just start wailing on these things. You know, I can't swing much. It's hard to get in here, so it's not exactly ideal for swinging a big heavy hammer. Woo! All right. Oh, I was getting a little worried there for a second. But, uh, okay, so that's one done, and seven more to go. And some of them are kind of hard to get to, so we'll see how the rest of these go. <laughs> this hammer's getting heavy, man. Ah, oh, mother. Ah, oh, I don't think I broke anything. How is it possible that I can hit these this hard this much and they're just not moving at all? All right, well, I got two bolts out. It's not working with the other one, so I've gotta try something different. It's just about quitting time anyway. Oh man, this has been slow going. We're gonna be here a while at this pace. Okay, well, today is a new day. My arms are feeling rested <laughs> and I'm ready to go at this thing again. The temperature change and the fact that the sun is hitting that side of the boat now, maybe that'll shift things enough to make it work now. So let's give it a go. All right, I think that one actually budged already. Yeah, I can't believe it, this thing's moving now. Bad news is this one is just about the only one left that I can get like a real swing at. But hey, I mean, I'll take whatever I can get. Oh, yes! Whoo! Man, that, that was not easy. I think uh, maybe the reason this worked out is because of these bad boys. All right, so I just talked with Pacific Seacraft and they were saying that at this point the best thing that I could do is come up here and actually hit the top of the chain plate with the biggest hammer that I can get my hands on. You know sometimes the solution really is just a bigger hammer. Okay so combination of the bigger hammer and then a, a chisel got it away from the hull up here on the top bit. Now I'm gonna see if I can't do the same thing with some of the bolts. Yes, ha ha ha, that's right. When I tell you to come out, you come out. Oh. Woo. Last one. Yes, oh yes, this is what we do, buddy. 
We're men! Ah, oh, yes! Woo! That was harder than I thought it was going to be. I think I should be able to do the next two a whole lot quicker. Today I'm going to be removing the old stern rail and lifelines back here. Basically we're going to be replacing all of this with the new stern rail solar arch davit bimini structure. So the first step in getting ready to do all of that is removing all this crap. For a lot of the nuts and bolts that hold the stern rail in place, I can access them pretty easily. But there's a handful that are really hard to get to, not just a little hard. The aft gate on the port side, the bolts to get to that are way up behind this electrical conduit area in the cockpit locker. And so that's gonna be hard to get to because I have to actually cut a lot of the zip ties holding all those wires and hoses in place and hopefully pull them down enough so I can get up into that holodeck joint cavity. Big bummer about that is I'm gonna have to put those wires and hoses back up there and zip tie them back in place at some point, which it's very hard for me to access that area. But I don't see any other way to go about it, so I'm gonna have to cut some zip ties. Oh my gosh, there is just so much shit up there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my hand up there at all. I think I feel one of the nuts right here. Yeah, okay, there's two of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, I barely fit in here. What's the phrase? If you can see it, then you can only touch it with one hand. If you can touch it with two hands and you can't see it, there we go. Oh yeah, that's better. Oh, all right, I think I got the wrench on. Hey, uh, hey bud, can you give me a hand? Is that working? Yeah, I think so. Okay, last nut. Let me try to find the next ones. I think I know where they are. Okay. All right, we did it. Oh. Yeah, one railing down. All right, so I am in the quarter berth, which is so messy right now because it is currently our garage. And I'm in here because I'm removing the last of the stern rail and stanchions that we need to remove and getting to the last of the nuts that we gotta get to. And the last couple are up in here. Now the bummer is I'm gonna have to definitely remove one or two of these battens here, just like I had to get to the chain plates. The issue is I can't remove the battens that I want to remove, like this one right here, because this headliner material is stapled to that batten. And there's probably like a hundred staples or more going into this batten. I've been told that I need to really resist having to pull those staples and then re-staple this material because it's just a huge pain in the neck. Well, looks like this batten is kind of held in place by this piece of trim back here. So, looks like I gotta remove that trim before I can remove any of these battens. When I think about doing these projects at the beginning in concept, they seem like they're gonna be so simple. It's two and a half days later, I'm <laughs> laying in the quarter berth on top of all of our crap tearing apart some of the woodwork just to try to access a couple of nuts. Come on, man. All right, so my attempts to access these nuts doing like minimal damage or impacting this area to the smallest extent has completely failed. Every time I think I'm gonna be able to sneak my way to the bolt location, I just find that there's another batten and another thing in my way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this whole batten, which is where all of this headliner is like stapled to that batten. So I'm just gonna access where the plugs are, drill out the plugs, unscrew it, and then this whole batten should just kind of swing out. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so that batten came off. You just had to kind of twist it just the right way. Dude, what a mess. There we go. <laughs> well, damn near destroyed half of the quarter berth here just to get to those nuts, just for that. But we're just about there. A Couple more bolts to get the stern rail off and then we'll be good to go here. 
Okay, I am not looking forward to this one. It's very tiny space. I'm not entirely sure I can even get in it at all. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> How's it feel? Pretty snug? Well, the problem is the autopilot because it's fragile, you know? So it's like trying to maneuver in a really tiny place and not break something. If my foot could hold this, I'm, I'd be in the perfect position. <laughs> I almost need to go in face first. Looking really good, bud. Killing it. All right, so where is the base compared to the turning block? Like two inches, forward and inboard. Yeah, let's do that one, but hurry because I'm in a very uncomfortable position. And I'm going to, oh, socket just fell down there. Buddy, I don't know if I'm getting out of here. You're doing it, bud. Ugh. Ugh. What year is it? Let's get this damn thing off. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that. Now we are ready for the new stern rail. The day after tomorrow, the Pacific Sea Craft crew is going to be coming with the rail. We're going to hopefully install it. So just a couple of days and we'll have a whole new looking boat back here. That took a lot more time than I thought it would. It was a lot more intense, a lot more frustrating. I destroyed a lot more of the boat than I was hoping to have to, but I think this is gonna all be worth it.